Hi, I'm John Miles, designer of the 3120A phase noise test probe from Symmetricom. Most of our other demos have emphasized the use of the 3120A to measure the short-term noise and or long-term stability of an oscillator or a frequency standard of some kind, so I thought I'd take a few minutes to show you a different application. You can use the 3120A to measure the stability of two port devices, not just signal sources. You're not even limited to linear devices. You could measure the phase stability of mixers, comparators, line receivers, fiber transceivers, and so forth. To illustrate how these types of measurements are conducted, we'll look at a simple low noise RF amplifier consisting of three common emitter stages with transformer feedback. As a building block, this circuit might be used in a 5 or 10 megahertz distribution amplifier or as an isolation amp. Regardless, chances are you don't want this stage adding a lot of noise to the signal it's amplifying or causing a large temperature dependent phase shift. The 3120A can tell you exactly what will happen to the signal on the way through this amplifier. In principle, a residual noise test is conducted much like a conventional phase noise or ADEV test. Two signals are applied to the 3120A, one from the DUT and another from a reference source. The 3120A measures the phase difference between these two inputs and analyzes its time and frequency domain properties. With a residual measurement though, we don't measure the phase difference between two different signals. Instead, we want to know what happens to the phase of a single test signal as it passes from the input to the output of a two-port device. So the idea is pretty simple and so is the implementation. We start with a 10 MHz stimulus signal with low broadband noise and we use a splitter to give the 3120A a sample of that signal at its reference input port. The other arm of the splitter feeds the stimulus to the amplifier or other two-port device under test. The device's output is then connected to the 3120A's DUT input port, and we tell the 3120A to measure the noise and phase drift just as we would in a conventional stability measurement. Given the typically low levels of noise being measured, residual measurements can really push the limits of the test equipment. We'll probably have to wait a while for the results. Let's set up a 12-hour residual acquisition at 10 MHz, then come back and see how we're doing. Okay, it's 12 hours later, and it looks like we have some impressively quiet hardware here. If we were measuring the phase noise of the best crystal oscillators available, we probably wouldn't see figures below minus 130 dBc per hertz at 1 hertz from the carrier. But in this residual test, our amplifier is contributing less than minus 140 dBc per hertz at 1 hertz. Judging by the large amount of variance or fuzz on the trace below 1 kilohertz, and the fact that the 3120A's measurement floor estimate is right at the level of the trace itself, we can trust our measurement down to roughly 3 kHz, but not much further. We can, however, see that the phase noise floor is at least minus 175 dBc per Hz at offsets beyond 1 kHz. AM noise is well characterized beyond 2 kHz, and it's a bit worse than the phase noise contribution. Again, below 1 kHz, we're looking almost exclusively at the 3120A's own noise. This trace reveals the amplifier's long-term stability over the entire 12-hour period. The observed phase drift over that period is less than 10 picoseconds. We can see the effect of thermal cycling from the air conditioning with a period of about 20 minutes. We can't be 100% sure whether the amplifier or the 3120A itself is dominating this measurement, but in either case the performance is just superb. The Allen deviation tells a similar story. We're below the 3120A's spec limits, so we can't be entirely sure which device we're really measuring. What we can say is that this simple three-stage amplifier is a good match for the best commercial frequency standards, just like the 3120A itself. Thanks for watching.